let's break down Daniel Priestley's amazing display of strategic storytelling in his appearance on the Stephen Bartlett podcast using the strategic story cards. So why is this guy so impressive here? Well, not only does he nail all five pillars of strategic storytelling on the podcast, he elevates two of them into true storytelling superpowers with amazing effects for his business. So stick around, we'll find out which ones and we'll look at them in detail. But before we start, if you want to discover what your secret storytelling superpower is, whether it matches up to Daniel's and how it can transform your business, take the quiz at storycaptain.co.uk. Okay, let's go pillar by pillar. First up, origin. These cards are all about turning your personal journey into a strategic asset. But look, don't take my word for it. I'll let Daniel Priestley explain why that's such a big deal in the first place. So I essentially say, what is your origin story? What's your background? I wanna see that you're doing something that aligns to what you've always been doing. I wanna see that this goes back to age 10. So the moment he's referencing there is the caught the bug card. When did you first get bitten by some kind of driving passion? And when you look back at it through a certain lens, it's basically led to where you are right now. Now, it's not always as simple as it sounds to pin that down, but it's very powerful when you do. Here is Priestley's. We had a house fire. It was a horrible experience, but it turned into a positive experience because I set up this garage sale and made some money and something bad happened and I turned it into something good through business. So that's all fine. But the origin card he plays over and over again in the interview is the epiphany card. Now, this is crucial. The epiphany card bridges the gap between your caught the bug moment and wherever you are right now, whatever moment you are in, whatever you're talking about. The epiphany card is simply, when did you have a crucial realization without which your business simply would not have been possible? Now, Daniel Priestley plays loads of epiphany cards in the interview, but let's check just one of them out. We ran a series of nightclubs at that thing and we, uh, it was the first time I'd ever made 10 grand in a night because we had a thousand people pay 10 bucks a head. Uh, it, was, it was wild and it was just literally just asking. So the epiphany card does two really important things. It's quite likely gonna get you talking about an earlier version of yourself when you were way less impressive and way more relatable. But then it demonstrates credibility earned most likely through some kind of triumph over adversity and some guts. Ultimately, you're talking about a time when you were the hero, learning what you needed to learn to now justify your position as a guide worth listening to and worth paying at the end of the day. Now that, my friends, is strategic storytelling in full flow and it creates a sense of what I call destiny by design. By joining the dots from where you've been to what you're doing right now and to where you're going, you make it seem like you were destined to be here in this moment and ultimately that your clients were destined to work with you. Okay, next up, challenges. Now this whole interview, just like business, is one big challenge to the listener or your potential clients to change the way they think and then to act on that change. That is the game. Now Daniel Priestley has turned that game into a game of stories. To be more precise, a game of core stories. Now this is undoubtedly one of Priestley's two secret storytelling superpowers, the ability to play multiple mindset shifter cards and magic bullet cards instinctively and as a focal point for his very best thinking on how his audience needs to change the way they think, that's the mindset shifter, and even more importantly than that, what they actually need to do to get results. That's the magic bullet card. So let's see him play these cards at will, like some kind of Paul Daniels master magician. Take it away. You're either being a reptile, an autopilot, or a visionary. We need to sharpen our ideas in the market, not in our minds. If you can't manufacture demand, there's no point manufacturing supply. Until you've got a Ferrari, no one steals your idea, with or without your energy. Functionality versus vitality. Environment dictates performance. It's not chasing the spotlight. It's becoming a spotlight. So business is a team sport. Income follows assets. You're too big to be small, too small to be big. So he uses these core story titles and many others, right? That is the absolute tip of the iceberg. He uses them everywhere, not just in interviews. Why? Because he's done what I call taken true ownership of them. He uses those core stories as lightning rods to keep things on track in any given moment and lead everything back to the foundational pillars of his business. These core stories are assets in the truest sense of the word, which all begs the question, where's your equivalent? Are you gonna make some of these core stories of your own or are you just gonna keep referencing this guy all the time? Because the reward is a sense of authority and resonance in the heart of the people who you are trying to get to believe in you and what you're doing. So that's definitely one of his superpowers. And remember, you can find out if yours matches up by taking the quiz now. 
Next up, transformations. Now, it's really great to have the discipline in your head to separate the way you talk about where your customers begin their journeys, which is the challenge cards, to the benefits of where they could be, which is the transformation cards. And also really trying to avoid explicitly referencing or thinking about your business in that equation. If you can do that, you're basically describing exactly what your business is all about, but entirely through telling the story of where your audience is and where they could be. It's a killer trick, and unsurprisingly, Priestley's got it nailed. Check out how he plays the instant impact card into Circle of Influence, starting at ground level of what you'll experience by implementing his expertise, then moving through the gears to how it will affect the people around you. I'm a big fan of this comp. You sit differently, you speak differently, you're, you're in this alignment, other people pick up on it, they want to quit their job and come and work in, on your team. Um, they hear about the vision, they hear about your origin story, they hear about the mission, and they go, oh, I'm going to leave what I'm doing and come and join that. And later on, he plays a true reward card with a bit of horizon expander thrown in. Effectively, what's the next level up? Once your clients have got the obvious benefits, how is it going to affect them more deeply? How is it going to change them and widen their view of what's possible? The the life force is the magic. It's the way you it's the way you bring it to life. You feel anything is possible, um, and you feel very expansive. You feel a sense of love and compassion and optimism. All right, John Lennon, is this a business podcast or is it some kind of Woodstock revival? Ah, don't worry, we can always play the cold, hard cash card. And it's very much worth covering that base, obviously. Visionaries can easily raise money and raise funds because they just think, well, someone's got the money and they want to put it to use, so I'll just give them a plan as to how we're going to put it to use. So what you're looking for here is to have a set of what I call signature outcomes. Pin down the most unique elements of the most powerful transformations you can achieve for your clients and get used to talking about them so frequently they roll off the tongue. They become second nature. We want the implication to be that you see these things all the time, day in, day out. No doubt whatsoever that you can achieve them as naturally and predictably as boiling an egg, yeah? But of course the fact is, these things don't just magically happen on their own. So we're talking about where people are, we're talking about where they could be, what bridges the gap? Oh yeah, it's the brand builder card. Now this is where you do talk about your business, but the idea is to use these brand builder cards sparingly, kind of like seasoning for a main course or the hero of the dish that should always be what the business lets your clients do. So yeah, this category does contain the mission statement card and the future vision card, neither of which Priestley plays on this podcast, but what he does have is a solid gold corking copper bottom hit of an altered state card, which is literally what do you turn your clients into when they work with you? Now, obviously not everyone's got this, but if you do, and it's the title of your book and the title of your accelerator and the thing you're basically known for, then like you're cooking with gas. So let's see how he plays the altered state card, then go straight into the method machine card. Now, all this is done in basically answer to the question which Stephen poses, which is, all right, then you're talking about all this stuff. How does it happen? The question he doesn't ask is, what does your business do? But the answer basically does exactly that. Check it out. The key person of influence job is to engage bigger and bigger audiences. They get on stages, they pitch, um, they publish content, they raise their profile, they do joint ventures and partnerships. So he's framing that method machine card as, hey, here are the steps you need to go through. But that's the main process that the key person of influence accelerator follows. So he is talking about the business, talking about how he gets results. And heck, once he gets onto the method machine card, he can't stop playing it. Chaos. Concept, audience, offer, sales. A rhythm of laps, leads, appointments, presentations, and sales. So more broadly, what he's doing here and what you can do too when you combine it with solid mission and vision cards and loads of others is you're building the myth around your business. First understanding, then deconstructing, reverse engineering this engine of change that you've created that gets these repeatable results for fun. Doing that creates this sense of anticipation in the minds of your audience. Like, ooh, what's gonna happen when I get my hands on this great engine of change? How exciting. It's strong stuff. And for all that Priestley's obsessed with the idea of the personal brand, my goodness, the machinery of the dent business is breathtaking. It's something to learn from. So now we come to the big picture category. What is going on in the world that sets the context for everything you're talking about? It's my favorite category and Priestley is a master of it. And what he does so effectively is create what I call a visionary narrative that underpins everything he's doing. He places himself in a position of leadership, looks to the future, breaks down trends, simplifies them, and then uses it all to create a sense of foundational urgency. So let's break some of that down. First up, direction of travel. Forget where we are, where are we going? What's happening is that we're going through an empire shift. 
And the current empire shift is this empire shift away from geography to digital. Nice. Then a little double combo of inciting incident, which is what is something that's triggered a big societal shift? And then iceberg incoming, which is what's coming around the corner that people haven't quite seen and aren't quite aware of yet. When I first saw AI do what AI does, I had that moment of like, oh no, this changes everything. We've just hit an iceberg. Everything's going to have to reorganize itself around an AI landscape. But we're all pretending like it doesn't exist. We're all pretending like this thing isn't doing what it's doing. Wow, this is all getting a bit serious. I thought this whole thing was about peace and love and vitality and energy and entrepreneurial buzz. Well, strap in because how about a burning question card to push things even further? What is the question that people should be asking themselves in light of what's happening and what's around the corner, but then not? And one thing that is going to happen in the next few years is everyone is going to have to make a conscious decision. Do I want to be a creator or a consumer when it, in relationship to AI? And then crank the drama, Steven Spielberg, with the end game card, which is who are the winners and losers in whatever future scenario you are now telling the story of? Because if, if you allow AI to use you, it'll just turn you into a, a consumer. You'll listen to more stuff, watch more stuff, do more, like spend more money. Or if you use it to build stuff and make stuff and produce stuff, you will be doing superhuman levels of creativity. Awesome. And then a hint of the future shock card, which I've seen in play elsewhere a great length and he kind of throws it down casually here. Question is, what is the thing that you think will happen in the future that if it happened now would blow people's minds? But it's gonna divide society into consumers and creators. Okay, now, if you start talking about schisms in society, then you know you're really adding that sense of foundational urgency within that visionary narrative. That is unquestionably Priestley's second storytelling superpower. Remember, take the quiz to see if you have that same power. But look, having that visionary narrative makes everything more important. It makes it more profound, gives things momentum, gives things meaning. Now, I love working with people, entrepreneurs, and seeing them unlock this side of what they do when they hadn't really considered it before. It does far more than just hashing down a mission statement, both in terms of your business success, but also for your own energy and outlook. And when you can tie the big picture stuff back to the earliest parts of your own origin story in your mind, and I've seen this happen firsthand, it's a good night Vienna. Everything you and your business does takes on a whole new dimension. It's exceptionally strong source. But look, let's give Stephen Bartlett, the man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour, we'll give him the final word on just how effective Daniel Priestley was in that display of strategic storytelling. You're very good at taking large, complex ideas, distilling them down into sort of simple, relatable, understandable concepts and delivering them to people in a way that's actionable and accessible. Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, and hey, did you notice how I threw some of my own core stories in there? Destiny by design. Take true ownership signature outcomes, build the myth, visionary narrative. Those are all magic bullet cards, but they're also the five steps of the growth story method that I use when I'm working with entrepreneurs to get their core stories straight. That's how we unlock huge levels of clarity and turn those core stories into assets that drive your business forward with irresistible momentum. So one more time, you could find out what your own secret storytelling superpower is by taking that quiz. So go and get on it. I have been and will continue to be Nico Ceballos-Jones. Until next time, do it like Priestley and go tell that story.